Welcome to Bangalore Revival Center. Here we dream revival and serve people with love. Today, Pastor Priji commences with a new series on healing. The title for today's teaching is I Am Willing, where we learn that God is ever willing to heal us no matter what we feel, think or know. Stay tuned to learn more. We pray this in the Lord's Prayer. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And how many of you know that it is not God's will for anybody to die of these sicknesses that we are, you know, seeing and experiencing? Uh, it is definitely not God's will. You know, we are, we are going to touch about that today. We are going to study that today. And in this whole season, we are going to just study what, what is it that takes for us to overflow in a grace to experience the healing power of God. What does it take for us to receive healing? What does it take for us to uh, cater the healing? What does it take for us to carry the healing of God to the nations around us, to, to the people around us, you know? And one of the biggest problem with the church is that it's not that we don't have power, it is not that we don't have solutions. It is not that we don't have answers. It is that we are ignorant of who our God is. And because we are ignorant of who He is, because we are ignorant of what He can do, that will become our limitation. Your revelation, whatever is revealed to you, whatever is your revelation will be your limitation. If your revelation is that God is your healer, then... God will be your healer. If your revelation is that no, God is somebody who is wanting to put you through trouble, wanting to put you through problems, then that is what you will manifest for you. Whatever is your revelation will be your limitation. You know, the Bible says in uh, the prophet Hosea, he said this in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. He said, my people are destroyed not because of uh, my desire to destroy them, but they are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Because they are unaware of what I am doing. Because they don't know me. You know, the NLT translation says, my people are destroyed because they don't know me. My people are destroyed not because they don't have information. My people are destroyed not because they don't have uh, understanding. My people are destroyed because they don't have knowledge. They don't have an intimate experience with me. So in this next 12 weeks that we're going to study this series on healing, our desire is to know God, is to know the heart of God, is to know the ways of God, is to know the, the, the way that God heals. What is it that is in the heart of God? What is it in the, in the mind of God when we talk about healing? How is it that God perceives the uh, the, the gift of healing. You know, how does God want to give us his healing? Now, see, we, I understand that so many of us have our own personal needs and we have areas of our life where we need healing, where we want to receive healing from God. As much as we want to receive healing from God, we also have to, at some point, become channels for that healing power of God to flow into others. It cannot, be, it cannot be or it's not enough that we receive healing from God. It's not just about what you would receive from God. See, when we are talking about prosperity, if it's only about how you can receive prosperity or how you can be blessed and not about how you can bless others, then that is an incomplete understanding. So in this entire season, as we are believing for healing, as we are praying for healing and as we are trying to pursue the grace for healing, I want us to believe that not only will we experience healing in every area of our lives, wherever we see a lack, wherever we see a brokenness, wherever we see something that is not whole, not only will we see healing in those areas of our life, we will also be the reason for somebody else to be healed. And we'll also be the reason for somebody else to encounter health and wholeness. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 28. Now, Jesus has just finished 
a few days of ministry. Jesus has just finished a few days of preaching and teaching and, and sharing about the kingdom of God. And he has been giving them perspectives. You know, like, like I began by saying, my people, they perish because they don't know, because they don't have the knowledge, because they don't have the understanding. So what is Jesus giving them? Jesus is giving them knowledge. Jesus is teaching them about the Father. And one of the things that Jesus would teach them is, don't you know that your Father knows everything that you need even before you ask even before you speak it out. Don't you know that your father knows your needs? And then he would say, don't worry about your needs. Don't be anxious about your tomorrow. And don't be, uh, don't be like the pagan people. Don't be like the people of the world who are constantly anxious about what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next. And at the conclusion of this teaching, the Bible says uh, that when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. So here is a huge crowd and, and the Bible says they were amazed, they were blessed, they were, they were thoroughly, uh, you know, satisfied in their spirit uh, with their teachings. And, and, and they said, uh, it says, for he taught with real authority unlike their, the, the, the teachers, their teachers of religious law. So this is why they were amazed. Because... He was not teaching uh, just out of information, but he was teaching out of authority. He was teaching from a place of authority because right now he was talking about how you can be forgiven, you know, in Matthew 5, 6, 7. He was talking about how you can be blessed. He was talking about how you can be, uh, you know, a, a experience financial breakthroughs. He was talking about how you can experience healing and restoration in relationships. He was talking about how you can experience the, the freedom of God in your uh, ministry, in, in the way that you serve God. He's talking about all these things and, and the people, they are seeing how Jesus is not just talking, but he is exercising his authority as he talks. Okay, so he's not just saying, okay, it will be a good idea if you do this. But he is, he is releasing kingdom principles, okay? Authority is exercised when you are representing a kingdom. See, when you're representing just a church, you, you have to be nice and you have to be kind and you have to be good. But when you're representing the kingdom of God, you have to move in authority. See, you know, any king, any king's ambassador that would go to another nation or another place and that is not courageous and that is not strong or that is not, you know, aggressive in what he wants and what he desires, that guy is going to get taken for a ride. He is going to, you know, be disrespected. He, not because that kingdom is not powerful. Not because that kingdom is not resourceful or they are not wealthy enough. But because this guy was not able to represent his kingdom correctly, he is going to be taken for granted and he is going to be taken for a ride. And the Bible says when the people saw Jesus, they did not just see Jesus as somebody who was bringing good information. Now say they saw Jesus as somebody who was speaking with authority. He knew what he was speaking and he was very insistent that this is how it is. He, like for example, he was talking about murder and he said, hey, you guys have heard that you should not commit murder. But I'll tell you what is murder. Murder is if you hate your brother. If you say something evil about your brother, that is murder. You're actually killing. Jesus is speaking like he is releasing judgments from the court. Where he's saying, hey, you are a murderer if you live like this, if you talk like this. So that is the level of authority with which Jesus ministered. See, when you live with authority, when you live with, when you walk with authority, when you talk with authority, when there is, when there is not just, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes we disguise um, our fear as humility. Sometimes we disguise our lack of courage as, you know, oh, I'm just being a humble man of God. No. There are places where you have to humble yourself. 
It is not before your sickness. There are places where you need to humble yourself. It is not before your enemy. Where you humble yourself is before your brother. See, when, it is, when we are dealing with our brothers and sisters, we are like bold and, you know, strong and imp- aggressive and, you know, no, I want to have my... But when we, when we are approached with the enemy, we are so, you know, shy or, you know, timid or, or, and, and we, we withdraw. And, and, and I pray that in this season, we will imitate the lifestyle of Jesus. What the Bible says is he did not just teach, but he taught with authority. And the Bible says, because of which large crowds, they followed Jesus. And it says, as he, as he came down from the mountainside, you remember Jesus was speaking on the mountain, right? On the Sermon on the Mount, 5, 6, 7 of Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, he was speaking on the mountain. And as he came down the mountainside, the Bible says, large crowds, they continued to follow him. Suddenly, verse 2, a man with leprosy. It says, the man approached him and knelt before him. So this is a man who has a physical infirmity. He has leprosy. He has uh, received it from somebody. You know, leprosy is a contagious disease. He has received it from somebody and he's, he's also been the reason for some other people to become sick. You know, because this man is now responsible for other people to also catch this sickness. And now the Bible says he, he comes to Jesus and he goes on his knees. So he has a right posture. He has a posture of worship. He has a posture of surrender. He has a posture of saying, you know, and agreeing that Jesus is the Lord over his life, right? He has, he, he's not coming with a demand saying, you better do it for me. No, he's coming with the right posture. And then he says, says, Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and you can make me clean. So what is this guy's prayer? He's saying, if you are willing, if if you, if, you would, if you would be okay in doing this, if you would agree to do this, if this is your heart for my life, if this is your desire for me, you can heal me and you can make me clean. Now, the response that Jesus had was beautiful. It says, the, the next verse, Jesus reached out and touched him. And the Bible says, then he said, I am willing. He said, be healed and instantly the leprosy disappeared. Now, this this is crazy because the man came to check God's will concerning his sickness. He had come to check whether it is truly the will of God for him to be healed. Because I'm sure that there are those things in his past that is plaguing his heart and he is feeling like right now he doesn't deserve to be healed. Right now he doesn't deserve the grace to be made clean. You know, and, and, and he has those things. You know that in the Bible there are several times when you will see leprosy break out as a result of rebellion. You know, Miriam, the, the story of Miriam, when Miriam and Aaron, when they rebelled against Moses, the Bible says immediately uh, leprosy broke out on her. Another guy called King Uzziah, he, he walked into the temple and he offered a sacrifice that was only meant to be done by the priest. Immediately, he was struck with leprosy and he had to be carried out of the temple. So leprosy has always been connected to sin, has always been connected to rebellion. So he... he he doesn't believe when he is coming and kneeling before Jesus, this guy, he doesn't believe that he is worthy of this healing. He doesn't believe that he, is, uh, he can receive this healing, that, that, that God would like to still heal him. And that is why he is asking this question, saying, Lord, if you are willing, if, if it is in your will for me to be healed. Now, I know that where many of us, we come from different 
you know, theological backgrounds, different churches, different denominations, and everybody has their own belief system about healing. Uh, some people believe that God used to heal back in the day when it was necessary, but now today it is not necessary. So God doesn't necessarily heal the way that he did back in the day. And, and so this guy, he had a similar doubt when he came to Jesus and said, Lord, if it is your will, if it is God's will, if it is God's heart, God's desire, would, won't, won't you please heal me and make me clean? So the thing is this, I'm sure there were those areas of this guy's life that needed fixing before he could, you know, because of which he got this sickness. There were those areas of his life because of which he uh, caught this problem, because of which he caught this struggle. And yet Jesus, when he's addressing this issue, he's, he's not saying, okay, first you need to... Uh, fits all these areas of your life and then I will be willing to heal you. Jesus didn't say, okay, you need to go and uh, make sure that uh, you have uh, uh, let go of all your uh, sins and you know, you've forgiven you. Only then I will change my mind. He, he didn't say any of that. He just immediately said, yes, I am willing. And before even this guy could respond or do anything, the Bible says Jesus reached out and he touched him. And he said, yes, I am willing. Yes, it is my will for you to be healed. Yes, it is my will for you to be touched. Yes, it is my will for you to be uh, cleansed. Yes, it is my will for you to be restored. So today the Lord is, is, is quenching any doubts that we may have about the ministry of healing. About how God wants to heal his children. If there is a slightest of doubt in your head that says, wait, I don't know if God wants to heal me or not. God is saying, no, I do want to heal you. I do want to heal my people. I do want to heal my children. It is in my will. It is my will for my people to walk in health and in wholeness. It is my will. It is my desire for them to experience uh, freedom in their health. See, as long as we don't believe that it is God's will for us to experience healing, we will not pursue after it. See, if we think that, okay, this is something that we we don't know if, if we should pray for or not, you know, if we should pursue it or not. See, if there is, if there are those areas of your life, let's say that you want to marry somebody and you don't know if it's God's will or not. So you wouldn't pursue it with everything, right? You would just say, okay, God, do whatever is in your will. Show me what is in your will. Show me what you want to do and I will follow. But here God is saying, it is in my will for you to be healed. It is my will for you to be restored. It is my will for you to walk in health and in wholeness. Irrespective of where you got that from. Irrespective of how you experienced what you experience. It is my will. You know, I like the fact that the Bible says Jesus, he just reached out and he touched him. He reached out and he touched him. And today, if we, if we will just have whatever doubts, you know, before God can touch our bodies or those areas where there is sicknesses, God is going to first reach out and touch our heart and heal those doubts and heal those places of our hearts where or our minds where we are still questioning whether God still wants to heal me, whether he truly is on my side. You know, I, I, I don't know what, what could it be for you. You know, growing up, I grew up in an environment where everything was uh, so uh, based on how good you are and how, how well you perform. And if you've been good, then you will not fall sick. If you've not been good, then you will fall sick. And, and, and that is like a punishment from God that you fall sick. Now, there, are, there is a lot of dynamics that we will understand as we go into this study. On, it's not just about being receiving healing. It's also about how to remain healthy. We'll talk all of, all of that later on. But what I'm talking about is that when you come to God you don't need to have 
the slightest of doubt whether God wants to heal you or not. You come to God believing that God wants to heal you. The Bible says that this man, he did not just pray for healing, but he also prayed for cleansing. Because it's not, ne- it's not enough that he'll be healed of the leprosy. See, leprosy was also an unclean thing. So Jesus, the, when he's asking, he's saying, Lord, I want to be, I, I don't, I, I want to be clean, I want to be healed, and I also want to be clean. Everywhere in scripture, you would find forgiveness and healing mentioned parallelly. In Isaiah 53, the Bible says he carried our sicknesses and he, and he forgave our sins. Both of it in one statement. So whatever, when we come to God, we don't say, God, if it is your will, forgive my sins. Do we pray that saying, God, if it is, if it is okay for you to uh, forgive my sins, if it is your will for me to receive forgiveness, then would you please forgive? No. We come with that confidence that our God is a forgiving God. We come with that confidence that God wants to forgive us. God loves us enough to be willing to forgive us. That's our confidence, right? I pray that when we ask for healing, when we pray for healing, we will have that same level of confidence. We will pray with that same desire saying, God, I know for a fact that you want your children to be healed. I will know for a fact that you want our city to experience healing. I know for a fact that you want people that may or may not know God. Okay? Healing is, is like a blessing that we can expect and pray for, for people that don't necessarily have a relationship with God. We think we, sometimes we make it a condition for a person to, uh, you know, have everything right in their life so that they can be healed. Whereas that's not true. If you study scripture, you would see that majority of the time, Jesus healed the people that were not in alignment with him, that were not necessarily his disciples. Hardly he, deci- he healed any of his disciples. The only healing that is mentioned in scripture is about how Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law, who was also not necessarily a disciple of Jesus. None of the disciples of Jesus actually received a healing from Jesus. Most of the people that did receive healing from Jesus were people that didn't really have a close connection or an intimate relationship with Jesus. So today, we need to change our perspective about the gift of healing. The Bible says God makes his reign fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous alike. And healing is a gift like that. God gives us forgiveness to everybody. If you desire for it, he will give it to you. In the same way, we can now expect and pray for healing for not just ourselves, but even for people that do not necessarily have a perspective or an understanding about God. It is a medium for us to bring the favor, the grace, the blessing, the love, the mercy of God to somebody who is blinded to it. Healing is like a physical manifestation that we can release into people's lives. And the Bible says that, uh, that this man, he, he was immediately, as soon as Jesus touched him, as soon as that revelation went into his spirit that God was willing to heal him, it says that immediately the leprosy disappeared. Immediately. It was not a gradual process, but immediately that leprosy disappeared. So there can be that one revelation that can come into your spirit. See, the Bible says before Jesus said, I am willing, Jesus had already touched him, right? Yeah? Jesus had already reached out to him. Jesus had already touched him. But Jesus also needed to speak the word, I am willing, because there was still, there was still that question in his heart whether God will heal me or not, whether God wants to heal me or not, whether God wants to release his healing hand over me or not. And that word, when Jesus said, I am willing be healed, immediately that word went and healed this man. So today the Lord is speaking over your circumstances. It may not be a physical sickness. It may not be a physical challenge. It may not be an issue which is tangible like this guy was. 
whatever healing you're expecting from the Lord. The Lord is speaking this over your healing, over your need, over your health, over your bodies, over your relationships. God is saying, I am willing, be healed. I am willing, this is my will for you, be touched, receive this grace for healing. I am willing. It is God's will for his people to be healed. The verse 4, it says, Then Jesus said to him, Don't tell anyone about this yet. Instead, go straight to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. So what what Jesus tells this guy is very beautiful. You know, this is according to the ritual law of the Old Testament. He says, right now, you've been healed already. You've been, you've already been made whole. As soon as Jesus spoke that word, as soon as that doubt disappeared, as soon as that question in his heart got evaporated, this guy got healed. And now Jesus tells him, hey, it is necessary that now you don't talk about it, but instead, go to the priest with an offering and let him examine you. Let him go through your body and let him testify that you are cleansed and let him proclaim that you are cleansed. And that will become like a public declaration. That will become a public testimony about your healing. Jesus is not telling him to hide his healing. He is asking him to go to the right sources from where he can testify his healing. See, many a times, because we are unaware of how to, how to host our healing or how to take care of the healing that we have received from God, we are not able to testify of it. It's not that we don't have that healing. It's just that it, it never becomes a blessing to anybody else. God has done so many things in all of our lives. And, and when we bring it, to submission to the right leaders, the right sources that God has placed over our lives, that small breakthrough, that small blessing, that small healing that you have received can now become a blessing to so many others, can now become a reason for so many others to be touched and made whole and receive the, the testimony of your life. And that's what Jesus asked him to do. He said, hey, right now don't publish it. But go find your priest. Go find your leader. And go and let them examine what God has done in your life. And then it will become a public testimony. Amen? So in this season, if we, if we have any area of our personal lives where we are saying, where we are asking God for a help and, and a touch from God's presence and saying, God, I, I need you to... I need you to help me in these areas of my life. Or th this, is, this area is not whole. See, when I say healing, I'm not just talking about disease. I'm talking about any areas that is not whole. Any area that is not fixed. Each and every one of those areas needs a healing touch of God. And, and, and you need to know that God's will is not for you to stay as you are. God's will is not for that. You know, if you read uh, 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2, this is the Apostle John. He's writing to a church and he says, Dear friend, I hope and I wish and I desire that all is well with you and that you are healthy in your body as you are strong in your spirit. So he's not just saying, I, I'm praying that you will be strong in your spirit. No. He's saying, my hope, my prayer, and my desire is that whatever is happening in your spirit, how many of you know that in our spirit, we are a brand new person when we became followers of Jesus? In our spirit, we are a new individual, new personality, completely brand new person in our spirit. And the Bible says, the Apostle John says, my desire is that whatever is in your spirit will now translate into your flesh. That is my desire. That's my prayer for you. He's not saying if it is God's will, if it is a, a good time for you to be healed, if it is a good time for you to be healthy, nothing like that. He's saying this is something that a child of God can expect and pray for and desire for, that, that, 
that the state of our spirit will translate into the state of our body. So if there is a sickness in our body and if there is a, a, a healing that we have received in our spirit, then we have to contend for that healing to translate from our spirit to our body. What does it say? It says, I hope that all is well with you and that you are as healthy in your body. Healthy in your body. You are well in your flesh. You are you're well in your soul. You know, see when I say uh, body, there are two elements to your body. There is this flesh and there is a soul. Spirit is different. Spirit is what God has put inside you, right? What God has breathed on the inside of you. But soul is what has been trained and nourished and cherished by our environment. Soul can sometimes get damaged and that is why you have all these mental health conditions. Your body can sometimes get damaged because of your physical environments. And the Bible says, I, my prayer is that your bo body, which consists of your flesh and your soul, will be as healthy as your spirit is, as healthy as you're strong in your spirit. So today, if you, if you are strong in spirit, if you are somebody who is pursuing your spiritual maturity, spiritual growth, then you cannot do it devoid of physical growth. Do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot say that I, I just want breakthrough in my spirit. I don't care about how my mental health condition is. I don't care how my physical health is. You cannot say that because your physical health needs to be in proportion to your spiritual health. That's what the Bible says. He says, my desire is that you will be as strong in your physical body as you are strong in your spirit. So it is God's will for us to pursue that level of synchronization between what is happening in our spirit and what is happening in our body. So in this season, if, if, if God is giving you a revelation of any particular uh, breakthroughs or any particular thing, it is not something that we have to receive and say yes and amen to it in the spirit and say, wow, my spirit is growing and that's it and be content with it. But it is also for us to now begin to pursue and say, now, how can this revelation begin to translate into my flesh? How can I truly uh, see the fulfillment of it where the word in my spirit now becomes flesh? Where the word now manifests and it begins to make sense to my body. It begins to make sense to my mind. So there is absolutely no condemnation. You know, I'm not saying that if you are, if you are unhealthy in your body, that you're, not, you're doing a bad job at being in sync with your spirit. That's not what we are saying. You know, many a times we take it too far where we uh, condemn people who, are, who have a physical challenge or a, or a physical sickness or a physical problem. That's not what we are trying to do at all. We are not trying to put down anybody. We are not trying to discourage anybody. We are saying, hey, this is the capacity of your spirit. This is what... God's desire is for you. This is what God's plan is for you. And if you will align yourself, if you will just yield yourself to this, then you will receive God's will. You will see the manifestation of God's will in your life. See, God's will is for us to be blessed. Do you know that? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Just in case you don't know that. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you. God is saying this. God is saying, I know the plans that I have for you because they are plans for a good uh, and, a, and a bright future. They are, they are good plans and they are not plans for disaster, but they are a plan for good. They are plans to give you a good future. They are plans to give you a good hope. That is my plans for you. That is God's will for us. If we are really convinced about this, then we need to pursue it and say, okay, God, how can this now begin to translate into our physical world? How can this now translate into my daily activities? How can this now translate into the way that I carry my physical body? You know, if you read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, 
Many a times we read it in a different context, but today I hope that you will see it in a new light. It says, and so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give what? To give your? To give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them, let your bodies be a living and a holy sacrifice. The kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Verse 2, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So what is Apostle Paul writing about? God's will for us. What is God's will for us? God's will for us is to not conform to the patterns of the world, not give in to what the world says, but to be in sync with the way that God thinks about us. Now, what does God think about us? God's thoughts for us is that we will be healed. God's thoughts for us is that we will have a future filled with hope. We will have a future filled with God's goodness. That is God's desire, God's will for us. And here, Apostle Paul says, You should not, when you are pursuing this uh, breakthrough in your life, you should not copy the behaviors and the customs of this world. Now, we would sometimes think that this is talking about how uh, you have to be pure and holy and, you know, without sin in your life. Whereas when, like I told you before, in scripture, you would always find sin and sickness mentioned together. That God, Jesus did not just die to take away your sin, but he also died to take away your sickness. Both of it manifests in your flesh, right? Both of it manifests in your soul and in your body. You, it, it can either be in your mind or it can either even translate into your body. That is where sin and sickness lives. Now, Apostle Paul says, don't copy the behaviors and the patterns and the customs of this world when it comes to your, you know, you overcoming sin and when it comes to you overcoming sicknesses because it says, let God transform the way that you think. That let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think, by renewing your mind. It says, when you do that, then you will learn what is a good, what is a good, pleasing and perfect will of God. Then you will see the good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God in manifestation. I already established that it is the good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God for you to be healthy. Now, Paul says, now you need to be watchful to make sure that you do not imitate the patterns of the world. So that 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 pleasing will of God, the good will of God, the, the perfect will of God will now manifest into your life. Now, the world says to be healthy, you need to do this. The world says to be healed, you need to do this. The world says this is how you will experience. Now, now I'm not against medical science. I'm not against uh, you know, you know, anything that we, we agree that it is rational, logical. We are not against that. And yet, we, we are not driven by that. You know, we are not totally dependent on that. Our... Our source of healing does not come from medical science. Our source of healing is from the will of God for our life. You know, it's not because science says that you can be healthy, that you are healthy. It's because you believe that God's will for you is is to be healthy. God's will for you is to be whole. God's perfect desire for you is to be healthy. And verse 1, go back to verse 1, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says... I plead with you now, my dear brothers and sisters, to give your bodies as a living and a holy sacrifice. Not just holy, but also as a living sacrifice. So there are two elements to it. There is an element of life and there is an element of holiness. You have to be uh, disconnected from sin and you have to be disconnected from everything that will steal your life. Which means, see, see, when I'm talking about life, 
We are not talking in the spiritual terms. What does it say? It does, it's not talking about spirit. It doesn't say give your spirit as a sacrifice. What is it saying? Give your bodies, bodies as a sacrifice. So, which means your body needs to be alive when you give it as a sacrifice. You, you understand what I'm trying to say. When I say the, use the word living sacrifice, I'm not talking about spiritually living sacrifice because it's not a spiritual sacrifice we are talking about. We are talking about a sacrifice in our body. That our body needs to be one, disconnected from anything that can make it unholy and it has to be disconnected from anything that can uh, make it uh, lifeless, living and holy. Disconnect from sickness and disconnect from sin at the same time. Can we pursue and expect and believe for healing the way that you would believe for purity in your life? Come on, I'm, I'm, I'm messing up your mind this morning and I'm intentional to do it. Don't mind. Because sometimes we, we just think that, okay, God just wants me to be holy. God just wants me to be, uh, you know, sinless and... You know, that's all. And we stop with that. Whereas if you read scripture, God wants what is happening in your spirit to now translate into your body. God wants your body to be as healthy as your spirit is strong. And now God says, hey, wait a minute. Your body needs to be a living and a holy sacrifice. Living and a holy sacrifice. So when I pursue healing, when I pursue health, when I pursue the grace to walk in wholeness in my body, what I'm actually pursuing is a lifestyle of worship to God. That's what it says here. Because this is a kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Your body, your body being alive and holy is a way to worship God. I'm not saying if you die, you cannot worship God. No. But you cannot worship God in your body. Because your body is done away with once you die. After you die, only your spirit can worship. That's why the psalmist would write saying, will, will my body worship you in the grave? It can't. Your body is, is, it becomes quiet once you die. And the, and the purpose of God for your body is that your body will be alive and it will be holy. It will be a living and it will be a holy sacrifice. So we can treat our sicknesses like it is impure, like it is unholy, like it is illegal in our body. So what is the kind of attention you would take in your spirit? How, how are you going to pray? How are you going to go crazy if you find an unhealthy pattern of you know, speaking or, you know, doing something that will bring unholiness into your life. How would you, you know, ferociously pursue to get that out of your life? Can we expect the same pursuit of God when it comes to any unhealthy patterns that get into our body and say, no, this is not God's will for my life. You know, this is not God's plan for my life. God's plan for my life is that I will be a living and a holy sacrifice. God's plan is for me to have a future filled with hope, a future filled with goodness, a future filled with glory. That is God's plan for my life. And I am not going to tolerate this sickness because sickness is not my portion. Amen. Sickness is not legal in my body. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say my spirit is a temple. You know, I'm, I'm focusing back to back again on the body. It doesn't say my spirit is a temple. It says my body is a temple. And, and you know, it, it's so scary because it goes on to say, if your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and if you destroy the temple of the Holy Spirit, God will destroy you. That's, that's the term that is used there, if you read it. If that is so serious, then... When you don't pursue healing in your body, man, you are, you are actually fighting against the temple of God. You're actually destroying the temple of God by not pursuing the healing, by not pursuing God's will for your body to be whole. 
So in this season, I, I truly believe that in the next four months, not only are we going to walk in health and wholeness, but we are going to be the hands and the feet of Jesus to release, to minister this health and wholeness to so many others. Because if we can change the way that we think, we will be transformed, we will become a new person. That's what the Bible says. Verse 2, read it one more time. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Don't copy the behaviors or the customs of this world. But in this season, let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. The, if you can change the way that you think, you will experience the good, the pleasing, and the perfect will of God. You will experience health and wholeness. You will experience healing beyond your wildest imagination. In this season, God is not drawing us to a place of, okay, now if you will fast and pray for 40 days, you will be healed. God is not saying if you can worship for 24 hours, you'll be healed. God is not saying if you will give more money. No, God is saying if you can change the way that you think. If you can just stop believing the lies of the enemy, and if you can believe what I am saying to you, I am saying, I am willing, be healed. This is my will for you, be healed. This is my desire for you, that you will be a holy and a living sacrifice. This is my will for you, so be healed. Receive this. You know, we are living in a day and a time when we are surrounded by, you know, people dying, right? You know, the death rate in India at the moment, the kind of, the number of people who are being infected at this point in India is so high. And at this point, we have to cling to the promises in God's word. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, when you know the will of God, we have to pursue that, right? When you know that this is God's will, we have to pursue that. We have to fight for it. We have to pray for it. We have to declare that. The Bible says the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. He does not want anybody to be destroyed. So do you think that because of this sickness, people are being destroyed without hearing the gospel? Do you think that because of this sickness that is plaguing our nation, that people are dying without repentance? People are going to their grave without having experienced a touch of God? If that is so, then it is not God's will for them to die. It is not God's will for them to be destroyed. That is, that is what the scripture says. And you and I, we are the special people who have access into the mind of God, into the heart of God. We, have, we understand the will of God. The people of the world, they don't understand the will of God. They don't know God and they don't understand his will. But you and I, we understand God's will. It is God's will that they do not be destroyed. It is not God's desire for them to be destroyed. If that is so, it is necessary that in this season we will pursue this healing. Once we understand that this something is God's will in our life, we have to pursue that with everything in us. See, it is God's will for us to be blessed, but not everybody experiences that blessing because we don't pursue it. It is God's will for us to be uh, away from our sin, but not everybody experiences that because we do, they don't pursue. It is God's will for us to uh, have freedom in our relationships, but not everybody experiences it because they don't pursue it. They don't run after it. They don't, they don't fight for it. They don't dig into scripture to understand how they can renew their mind. But Today, the Lord is saying, it is my will for my people to be healed. It is my will for my church to walk in health and wholeness. It is my will for you to bring healing, not just into your bodies, because your spirit is strong, but because of your, your life, because of the revelation you have, that you become a channel of healing for the people of the world, that you become a reason. You know, something that I do every morning and evening is I walk around my neighborhood and I say, my, my, this, this street belongs to the Lord because I live here. There can be no COVID infections on this street because I live in this place, because I, am, I, I declare that the will of God, let your will be done, let your kingdom come. 
When you're praying for somebody, don't ever go and pray if it is your will, heal that person. You would never pray saying, if it is your will, forgive that person, will you? You would never say, if it is your will, please, uh, you know, forgive his sins. But when, why do we say, if it is your will, heal this person? Because it is God's will to heal. It is God's will. God is just looking for a few people that are going to just stand in the gap and say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. I will be the ambassador that is going to stand in the gap and with authority release this kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a matter of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let's read Psalm 103, verse 1 onwards. Read it with me. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Read one more time. All that is within me, bless his holy name. It's not just, just with my words, but within me. Everything that is within me. If, if there are things in your life which are not legal, if there are things in your body which is not correct, those things cannot bless God. And that is why it is, it is necessary that we get rid of those things in the spirit. It says, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. So if there, are, if there is a tumor that you're fighting with inside your body, that is an illegal occupant of your body and it has to leave. Everything that is in you that is not able to worship God. Sicknesses cannot glorify God. Just like sin cannot glorify God, sicknesses cannot glorify God. And so everything that is within me that cannot, that does not bless His holy name. I reject it in Jesus' name. I can't come against it in Jesus' name. I cancel it in Jesus' name. This is illegal. It is not allowed in my body. Verse 2. Let all that I am bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Every single one of the things that He does. Forget not His benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He's not talking about His spirit realm. He's talking about his soul realm. He's talking about his body. See, his body involves his flesh and his soul. He's not saying, my spirit, you have to worship God. See, Jesus taught about worshiping God in the spirit. That's a different thing. But what the psalmist is talking about is how all that is within me, my soul, I'm telling you, you need to worship God. My body, I'm telling you, you need to be bringing glory to God and forget not all his benefits. Today, the Lord is reminding you to not forget the benefits, the things that God has done for you, the healing that Jesus has paid a price for, the healing that is your birthright, the healing that is available for you and me. The Lord is saying, forget not all his benefits. Verse 3, very powerful. For he forgives all your iniquity and he heals all your diseases. It doesn't say some of your diseases. It says all of your diseases. He heals and he forgives at the same thing. That is the benefits that we are talking about. The psalmist says, do not forget the benefits. The benefits is that he heals and he forgives. He forgives and he heals. And he heals and he forgives. He is a forgiving God and he is a healing God. And today the Lord is reminding us of that one more time. Do not bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits, because he forgives all my iniquity, all your iniquities, and it heals all your diseases. This is the benefit. This is the blessing. This is the will of God for my life. Verse 4 of Psalm 103, it says, he redeems your life. From the pit, and he crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Again, who is the psalmist speaking to? He's speaking to his soul realm. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He is not talking in the spiritual terms or in the spiritual dimension. He's not saying, even though my 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 body is not okay, my spirit is fine. He's, He's talking to his body and he's saying, God is redeeming your life from the pit. 
God is going to crown your body. God is going to crown your mind. God is going to crown your emotions. God is going to crown your emotional, mental health with steadfast love and mercy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Verse 5, it says, He satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know how an eagle... He, his, his strength is renewed. Every season, the eagle will go through this process where it will shed all its feathers. And then it'll wait, it'll wait and wait till its, its wings, they grow back up. And then it will have the same speed and even greater speed like before. Before he would go into that transition phase. And the Bible says when we, when we wait on God, this is what God wants to do for us. This is what God wants to release in our life. He wants to renew our strength. Like, uh, He wants to renew our youth. This is equally applicable for old and young people. And God says He wants to renew your youth like the eagles. He wants to renew, He wants to do a new thing on the inside of us. If we will just yield to God today, if we will yield our bodies, if we will yield our mind, if we will yield our emotions, every area of our life where there is any lack, any brokenness, any failures, God is speaking this over there. I am willing, be healed. This is my will, be restored. This is my plan for you, for you to have a good and a future. You would have a good future. You would have a future that is filled with hope, that you would have a future that is uh, that is going to be a blessing to you. And, and, and when, we are, when we are believing for healing, God is also touching each and every area of our life where, where there needs to be healing. It's not just physical healing we are talking about. Any area of your life, whether it be your relationships, your finances, whichever area that you feel that, okay, it needs the healing touch of God. God is saying, I am willing to be healed because God wants you to be a living and a holy sacrifice. A living and a holy sacrifice. Thank you for tuning in for today's sermon. We hope it blessed you. Do visit us at dreamingrevival.com for more information. You're welcome to tune in every Sunday for our live celebration service at 11 a.m. at youtube.com slash God bless you and have a blessed week.